All right, so uh, today we're going to look at the finite element formulation for plane elasticity. And after that, you know, previously we covered scalar fields. Think of that as pressure we need to solve for in poor elasticity. Now we'll learn how to solve for the displacements today. So the final step is just, and that's what we'll do next time, is just put them together. And then we'll have a finite element formulation for poro elasticity. And we can compute some solutions to those equations that we covered early in the semester. So for plane elasticity, when I'm saying plane, I'm, I mean not, not PLAI, but rather plane like in 2D. And so plane elasticity, so we're talking about things that are independent things of independent of the z direction, right, or the, the depth. And so if you recall, our momentum equation was And so I've, I tried to avoid doing this previously in the class because it was uh, a little more general in terms of you know if you what coordinate system you're working in. Um, but now that we're we, we, you know so in other words we use this index notation and I always used one two three whatever. So now I'm just going to say that this is equivalent to to saying this right. So I'm going to use x, y, and z. This should be t squared. So everybody OK with that? I'm just using x and y instead of 1 and 2. Because now we have element numbers, node numbers. And I don't want to have superscripts and subscripts all around my, all of my, around my variables. And you have to keep track of. This is a element one, node one, or index or in indice one, right? All right. So, um, by the way, I saw some of you turn your homework in. I've already extended the offer to a couple of people to turn it in on Tuesday. Uh, so I'll make that for the whole class. If somebody needs until Tuesday to turn it in, you can take take it back, or if you submit it online, you can resubmit. Okay, I'll, I'll change the, the deadline. Uh, but you will have, probably uh, over the weekend, I'll put up the next assignment, so just beware that, you know, there's another one coming. Okay. So, if we introduce a notation, a vec more of a vector style notation, which is convenient for writing things compactly in finite elements. Since we're only dealing with plane, we, we really only have three unique stress entries now, right? So if we introduce the notation like this, where this is a differential operator matrix, then I can write this equation more, this set of no equations, a little more compactly. <coughs> in the vector form. And I'll use a double dot notation to indicate two differentiations with respect to time. And it's just, you know, it's understood that B is BX, BY, U, UX, UY. All right, so, you know, we also have a constitutive model that relates stress to strain. I mean, this equation, what we want to solve for is displacements, right? But 
Stress is a function of strain, which is a function of displacements. And we can use this uh, same differential operator matrix to define the strain. So we have a strain matrix that's equal to D U. And the strain matrix is going to be sigma XX, sigma YY, 2 sigma XY. And if you wonder where that 2 comes from, go back to earlier in the class, previous in the notes. So then we can, we can write our constitutive model like this. And I used the same entry not notation as earlier in the class. So earlier in the class when we had a full stress tensor, meaning a three-dimensional stress tensor where the Z components were active, right? Then we had three more entries, right? Because it was, it was a six. The stress was six components long, right? Sigma XX, sigma YY, sigma ZZ, sigma XZ, sigma YZ, sigma XY, right? So if you go back and you look at that matrix and how I define the components in, in that six by six constitutive model matrix, that's th these are the coefficients that come from that, and that's why I use C66 right there, okay? And what these guys look like are different depending upon if it's plane strain or plane stress. And we talked about that when we covered the theory, right? So you can just go back and refer back to that. Right now, we'll just use these generic. All right. So, so we can write now that our stress vector is C times the strain vector. And then if we write, rewrite our, our uh, momentum equation, just moving everything, just rewrite that. Now we plug in our constitutive model. So we're going to write C E and then we plug in uh, our strain displacement relationship for epsilon. So now we have an equation that is in terms of U only. Right? And I think for one of your for one of your homework assignments, you actually in component form you, you wrote it out that way, right? You use this for the full tensor. You use the strain displacement relationships to write out the, the full tensor, and that that thing you wrote out is you know, call a Navier operator, basically. Right. Oh, yep. Um, I was looking at the first equation that you wrote for the, the, uh, the differential matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there, you're right. There, there's a, a minus sign missing, right? Okay. So. It should be minus rho u, right? Yeah. I, I actually don't know why I wrote it that way. There's no 
no special reason other than I just wanted to, I just rearranged it to show you that I was just operating on one, on this term alone. But yeah, it should be, I mean, the other way to, the other way to write it would be, uh, this way, right? Right. Yeah. I, d I just rearranged it to show you I was only manipulating the, the left side. Um, so for this problem, we'll also have natural boundary conditions in component form. Where these ends are unit vectors. So this is on the boundary. And then the, so these are the natural boundary conditions. And then we also have the essential boundary conditions that are u of x equal, you know, u not x, u y equals u not y on the boundary. And you might use the symbol stress and displacement on the stress boundary and displacement value boundary. And so, I mean, you, you can recognize this is just our, our coaching stress equation, right, in 2D, where So basically here I was just introducing some notation, and then we'll develop the variational form or weak form, then the finite element equations, and I'll sort of switch between or show both the initial notation and the vector notation that I just defined.